The beginning of the good news concerning Jesus Christ, Son of God, according as it stands written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger on a mission before your face, who will make ready your road, a voice of one shouting out in the uninhabited place, Prepare the Lord's road. Straight and level be constantly making his paths. There came upon the human scene, John the baptizer, in the un uninhabited region, making a public proclamation with that formality, gravity, and authority which must be heeded and obeyed, of a baptism which had to do with a change of mind relative to the previous life and an individual lived. This baptism being in the view of the fact that sins are put away. And there kept on proceeding out to him in a steady stream all the Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem. And they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they were confessing their sins. And there was this John, clothed habitually in a camel's hair garment, a leather belt about his loins, his diet locusts and wild honey. And he made a proclamation, saying, There comes he who is mightier than I after me, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. As for myself, I baptized you by means of water, but he himself will baptize you by means of the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. And immediately, while he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being rent asunder and the Spirit in the form of a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out from within heaven, As for you, you are my Son, the Beloved One. In you I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit thrust him out into the uninhabited place. And he was in the uninhabited place forty days, being constantly put to the test, being solicited to do evil by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels were constantly ministering to him. And after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, making a public proclamation with that formality, gravity, and authority which must be heeded and obeyed of the good news of God, and saying, The time has been fulfilled with the present result that the present moment is epochal in its significance, and the kingdom of God has drawn near and is imminent. Be having a change of mind regarding your former life, and be putting your faith in the good news. And while he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting their net about in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Come, after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And immediately, having put away their nets, they followed with him as his disciples. And having gone on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and they were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and having left their father Zebedee in the boat with the employees, they went off after him. And they go into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, having entered the synagogue, he went to teaching. And they were completely amazed at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who possesses authority, and not as the men learned in the sacred scriptures. And immediately... There was in their synagogue a man with a spirit, an unclean one, and he cried out, saying, What is there in common between us? What is there in common between us and you, Jesus, Nazarene? You came to destroy us. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, the rebuke not resulting in any conviction or confession of sin, saying, Shut your mouth. And come out of him at once. And when the unclean spirit had torn him with convulsions, he screeched with a loud voice and came out of him. And that they were all amazed, so that they kept on inquiring and demanding of one another, saying, What is this? Fresh, t fresh teaching backed by authority. And the unclean spirits he commands, and they obey him. And they and there went out the report concerning him immediately throughout the whole region of Galilee. And immediately, having come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. 
and Simon's mother-in-law had been bedridden for some time, burning up with fever. And immediately they speak to him concerning her, and having come, he went to lifting her up, having taken hold of her hand, and the fever left her, and she went to serving them. And evening having come, when the sun had gone down, they kept on carrying in a steady stream procession to him all those having ailments and those who were demonized. And all the city was gathered together, seated and facing the door. And he healed many who were afflicted with various kinds of diseases and demons, many of them. He ejected, and he kept on refusing the demons' permission to be speaking because they knew him. And in, and in the last watch of the night between three and six... In the early part of the watch, while it was still somewhat dark, he arose and went out, and went off into a deserted place, and was and, and was there praying. And Simon and those with him hunted him out, and they found him and say to him, All are seeking you. And he says to them, Let us be going elsewhere into the nearby country towns, in order that also there I may preach. For this purpose I came out. And he was preaching in their their synagogues all over Galilee, and casting out the demons. And there comes to him a leper, begging him, and kneeling, saying to him, If you are willing, you have power to cleanse me. And having been moved with compassion, having stretched out his hand, he touched him and says to him, I desire it, be cleansed at once. And immediately the leprosy left him completely, and he was cleansed. And sternly charging him, He immediately thrust him out and says to him, See to it that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself as evidence to the priests, and present that offering with reference to your cleansing, which Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But having gone out, he began to be proclaiming in public a great deal, and to be blazing abroad the account, so that no longer was he able to enter a city, but was outside in uninhabited places. And they kept on coming to him from everywhere. And having again entered Capernaum, after some days, he was heard of as being at home. And there were gathered together many, so that no longer was there room to receive them, not even at the door. And he was talking to them about the word. And they come, bearing to him a paralytic who had been picked up and was being carried by four men. And not being able to be bringing the paralytic to a place before him because of the crowd, they took off the surface of the roof where he was, and having dug through, they lowered the pallet upon which the paralytic was lying prostrate. And having seen their faith, Jesus says to the paralytic, Child, your sins are put away. Now there were certain of the men learned in the sacred scriptures, sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why is this fellow speaking in this manner? He is by contemptuous speech coming short of the reverence due to God, who is able to be putting away sins except one person, God. And immediately Jesus, having become fully aware in his inner being that in this manner they were reasoning within themselves, says to them, Why are you reasoning reasoning these things in your hearts? Which of the two is easier to say to the paralytic? Your sins are put away, or to say, Be arising, and pick up your pallet at once, and carry it away, and start walking, and keep on walking. But in order that you may have absolute knowledge of the fact that the Son of Man possesses authority to forgive sins on the earth, he says to the paralytic, To you I say, Be arising, pick up your pallet at once, and be going away into your home. And he arose, and immediately having picked up his pallet, went out before all of them, so that all were astonished and were glorifying God, saying, In this manner, never have we seen it. And he went out again along the seashore, and all the crowd kept on coming to him, and he went to teaching them. And as he was passing by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's desk. And he says to him, Start following with me and continue to do so as a habit of life. And having arisen, he followed with him. And it comes to pass that, as he was dining in his house, many tax collectors and sinners stained with vice and crime were dining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, 
and they were following with him. And the men learned in the sacred scriptures belonging to the sect of the Pharisees, having seen that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, were saying to his disciples, With the tax collectors and the sinners stained with vice and crime, is he eating? And having heard, Jesus says to them, No need do they have who are strong for a doctor, but those who are ill. I did not come to call righteous ones, but sinners. And John's disciples and those of the Pharisees were observing a fast. And they come and say to him, Why are John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fasting, but your disciples are not fasting? And Jesus said to them, The sons of the bride chamber are not able to be fasting while the bridegroom is with them, are they? As long as they have as as long as they are having the bridegroom with them, they are not able to be fasting. But there shall come days where there shall be taken away from them the bridegroom, and then they shall fast in that day. No one sews a patch consisting of cloth which has not been pre shrunk upon a worn out garment. Otherwise that which fills it up takes away from it the new from the worn out, and the tear becomes worse. And no one puts, a, puts newly made wine into worn out wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the wineskins, and the wine and the wineskins are destroyed. But newly made wine is put into wineskins, which are just beginning to be used. And it came to pass that on the Sabbath he was proceeding along a path through the fields of grain. And his disciples began to be making their way, picking off the grains as they were going along. And the Pharisees kept on saying to him, Observe that, will you? Why are they doing on the Sabbath which is not lawful? And he says to them, You have read, have you not, what David did when he was having need and was hungry, he himself and those with him, how he entered the house of God with Abiathar, was high priest, when... Excuse me. All right, David. You have read, have you not, that what David did when he was having need and was hungry, he himself and those with him, how he entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest, and the loaves that were set forth he ate, which are not permitted to be eaten except by the priests, and he gave also to those who were with him. And he, and he was saying to them, the Sabbath for the sake of man came into being, and not man for the sake of the Sabbath, so that the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And he again entered a synagogue, and there was there in that place a man whose one hand was withered, and they kept on spying upon him closely, whether he would on the Sabbath heal him, in order that they might bring a formal accusation against him before a tri tribunal. And he says to the man having the withered hand, Be arising in the midst of everybody around you. And he says to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept on being quiet. And having looked around about on them with a righteous indignation, being grieved at the callousness of their hearts, he says to the man, Stretch out your hand at once. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored to its former state. And having gone out, the Pharisees at once with the Herodians were giving counsel against him in order that they might destroy him. And Jesus with his disciples withdrew to the sea, and a vast multitude from Galilee followed, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and across the Jordan, and about Tyre and Sidon, a vast multitude, hearing constantly of such great things which he was continually doing, came to him. And he spoke to his disciples to the effect that they should always keep a small boat in readiness for him because of the crowd, in order that they might not crush him, for he healed many, so that, as a result, they kept on jostling him in order that they might touch him, as many as were having a distressing bodily disease. And the spirits, the unclean ones, when they set eyes on him, kept on falling prostrate before him, and kept on crying out with a loud voice, saying, As for you, you are the Son of God. And he kept on rebuking them and charging them under penalty that they should not make him known. 
And he goes up into the mountain and calls for himself and to himself those whom he himself was desiring. And they went off to him. And he appointed twelve in order that they might constantly be with him, and in order that he might send them forth as ambassadors with credentials representing him to accomplish a certain task, that of making a proclamation with such formality, gravity, and authority as must be heeded and obeyed, being equipped with delegated authority to be casting out the demons. And he appointed the twelve and added to Simon's name, the name Peter, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, he surnamed Boanerges, which is sons of thunder, and Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also handed him over. And he comes home, and there comes together again the multitude, so that they are not able even to eat bread. And having heard those nearest to him among his kinfolk, kinsfolk went out for the purpose of taking him by force, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the men learned in the sacred scriptures, the ones from Jerusalem, having come down, kept on saying, he has Beelzebul, and by means of the ruler of the demons, he is casting out the demons. And having called them to himself, he was speaking to them in the form of illustrations. How is Satan able to be casting out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom is not able to stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And assuming that Satan arose against himself and is divided he is not able to stand but has an end but no one is able having entered the house of a strong man thoroughly to ransack his equipment unless first he binds the strong man and then he will thoroughly plunder his house assuredly i am saying to you all sins shall be forgiven the sons of men and all malic malicious misrepresentations as many as they use to defame. But whoever maliciously misrepresents the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but he is guilty of an everlasting sin because they kept on saying he has an unclean spirit. And there come his mother and his brethren, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And a crowd was sitting in a circle around him, and they say to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers and your sister outside are seeking you, and answering them, he says, Who is my mother and my brethren? And they, having looked around about upon those sitting in a circle around him, he says, Behold, my mother and my brethren, whoever does the will of God, this one is my brother and sister and mother. And again he began teaching along the seashore, and there gathers together to him a crowd, the largest one up to that time so that he entered a ship in order to occupy a place on the sea. And the whole crowd was on the land facing towards the sea. And he was teaching them many things by means of illustrations, and was saying to them in his teaching, Be listening. Give attention to this. The sower went out to sow. And it came to pass that while he was sowing, some indeed fell alongside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. And other seed fell upon ground full of rocks, where it was not having much earth. And immediately it sprang up, because it was not having any depth of earth. And when the sun arose, it was burnt. And because it did not possess rootage, it withered. And other seed fell into the midst of thorns, and the thorns sprang up and utterly choked it. Of thorns, and the thorns sprang up and utterly choked it. Oops. Sorry about that. It's a little dark in here. And immediately it sprang up because it was not having any depth of earth. And when the sun arose, it was burnt. And because it did not possess rootage, it withered. And other seed fell into the midst of thorns. And the thorns sprang up and utterly choked it. And it did not give fruit. And other seeds fell on ground that was good. And it kept on yielding fruit, growing up and increasing. And it kept on bearing up to thirty folds and to sixty and to one hundred. 
And he was saying, He who has ears to be hearing, let him be hearing. And as soon as he was alone, those about him, with the twelve, went to asking him concerning the illustrations. And he was saying to them, To you the mystery of the kingdom of God has been given, and it is in your possession. But to those who are outside, in the form of illustrations, are all the things given, in order that seeing they may be seeing and may not perceive, and hearing they may be hearing and may not understand, lest, haply, they turn again and it should be forgiven them. And he says to them, Do you not understand this illustration? Then how is it possible that you will understand all the illustrations? The sower sows the word, and these are those alongside the road where the word is being sown. And whenever they hear, immediately there comes Satan and snatches away by force the word which has been sown in them. And these are, on the same principle of of interpretation, those who are being sown on ground full of rocks, who, whenever they hear the word, immediately with joy receive it, and they do not have rootage in themselves, but last only for a time. After that, affliction or persecution having come because of the word, immediately they are displeased, indignant, resentful. And others are those who are being sown in the midst of the thorns. These are those who heard the word, and with anxieties of the present age, and the deceitfulness of wealth, and the passionate desires with reference to the rest of the things not in these categories, entertaining in, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And those are they which were sown on ground that is good, which are of such a nature as to hear the word and receive it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some one hundred. And he was saying to them, The lamp does not come, does it? in order to be placed under the peck measure or under the reclining couch? Does it not come in order to be placed upon the lampstand? For there is not anything which is hidden, except it be in order that it might be made known. Nor has anything become hidden, but in order that it might come into full view. Assuming that a person has ears to be hearing, let him be hearing. And he was saying to them, Keep ever a watchful eye on what you are hearing, and the measure by which you are measuring, it will be measured to you. And it will be measured to you not only according to that measure, but there will be some added on top of that. For he who has, it shall be given to him, and he who does not have, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. And he was saying, In this manner is the kingdom of God, as if a man should throw the seed upon the earth and should be sleeping and arising night and day, and the seed should be sprouting and lengthening. How? He does not himself know. The earth bears fruit spontaneously, first herbage, then a covering for the grain, then the fully developed grain in its covering. And whenever the fruit permits, immediately he sends forth the sickle, because the harvest stands ready. And he was saying, In what way shall we liken the kingdom of God, or by what illustration shall we set it forth? It is like a grain of a mustard seed, which, when it is planted in the earth, is less than all the seeds which are upon the earth. And when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all of the herbs, and puts out great branches, so that the birds of the heaven are able to find shelter under its shadow. And by means of many illustrations of this kind, he was speaking to them the word as they were able to be understanding. But without an illustration, he was not in the habit of speaking to them. But in private, he was in the habit of fully explaining all things to those pupils who were peculiarly his own. And he says to them on that day, evening having come, let us go over to the other side. And having dismissed the crowd, they take him under their care just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats with him. And there arises a great windstorm of hurricane proportions, and the waves kept on beating into their boat, so that already it was being filled. 
and he himself was in the stern of the boat, sleeping on the sternsman's leather cushion. And they arouse him from sleep, and say to him, Teacher, is it not a concern to you that we are perishing? And having awakened, he rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Be getting calm, hush up, and stay that way. And the wind ceased its raging, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you such timid, fearful ones? How is it that you do not have faith? And they feared a great fear, and were saying to one another, Who then is this person, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And they came across the sea into the country of the Gerasenes. And having come out of the boat, immediately there met him, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had settled down there, making his home in the tombs. And no longer was any one able to bind him, not even with manacles, because he often was securely bound with shackles and manacles, and the manacles were snapped in two by him, and the shackles crushed together, and no one had sufficient strength to restrain him. And throughout all the night and the day, in the tombs and in the mountains, he was continually screaming and shrieking, and was constantly lacerating himself all over with stones. And having seen Jesus from a distance, he ran and prostrated himself on the ground before him. And he cried out with a great voice and says, What is there in common between me and you, Jesus, you son of the t son of the Most High? I adjure you by God, don't begin to torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he kept on asking him, What is your name? And he says to him, Legion is my name, because we are many. And he kept on pleading much with him to the effect that he should not send them off outside of the country. Now, there, <clears throat> now, there was there near the mountain a herd of hogs feeding, a great herd. And they begged him, saying, send us, send us at once into the hogs in order that we may enter them. And he gave them permission. And having gone out, the unclean spirits entered the hogs, and the herd rushed impetuously down the steep place into the sea, about two thousand, and were drowned one after another in the sea. And those feeding them fled and brought away tidings into the city and into the farms, and they came for the purpose of seeing what it was that had taken place. And they come to Jesus in view with a critical, searching eye the demoniac sitting, clothed and in control of himself, the one who had the legion. And they became afraid, and those who saw related fully and in detail to them how it happened to the demoniac and concerning the hogs. And they began to be begging him to go away from their boundaries. And while he was going on board the boat, the one who had been demon-possessed kept on begging him for for permission to be with him and he did not permit him but says to him be going into your home to your own relatives and bring back tidings to them of such great things which the Lord has done for you and of the fact that he had a, had a sympathy for you which issued in action in your behalf and he went off and began proclaiming publicly in, in, in the Decapolis such great things which Jesus did for him and all were marveling. And when Jesus had crossed over in the boat again to the other side, a great crowd was gathered together after him, and he was at the seashore. And there comes one of the synagogue rulers, by name Jairus. And having seen him, he falls at his feet, and begs him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come! Place your hands upon her in order that she might be healed and live. And he went off with him. And there kept on following with him a great large crowd. And they kept on pressing upon him almost to the point of suffocation. And a woman, having come, who had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had endured much suffering under the hands of many doctors, and had spent all of the things which she had, and was not even one bit improved, but rather grew worse. Having heard the things concerning Jesus, having come in the crowd behind, touched his garment, for she kept on saying, 
If I touch even his garments, I shall be made whole. And immediately there was dried up the fountain of her blood, and she suddenly came to feel in her body that she had been healed of her plague and was at that moment in a state of health. And immediately Jesus, having had a personal and clear knowledge in himself of the experience of power going out of him, having turned around in the crowd, was saying, Who touched me on my garments? And his disciples kept on saying to him, You are seeing the crowd pressing hard around you from all sides, yet are you saying, Who touched me? And he kept on looking round about to see the woman who had done this, and the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that which had been done for her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Be going into a state of peace, and be continually sound in body, healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, they come from the home of the ruler of the synagogue, saying, Your daughter died. Why are you still bothering the teacher? And Jesus, overhearing the word being spoken, says to the ruler of the synagogue, Stop fearing, only believing. And he did not permit anyone to follow with him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they come into the home of the ruler of the synagogue, and he looks carefully and with an understanding eye at the tumult, and at those who were weeping audibly, at those who were wailing greatly. And having come in, he says to them, why are you wailing tumultuously and weeping? The little girl did not die, but is sleeping. And they went to laughing and jeering at him. But after he himself had thrown them all out, he takes the father of the little girl and her mother and those with him and proceeds in where the little girl was. And having taken a strong grip on the hand of the little girl, he says to her, Talitha koam, which being interpreted is, Little girl, to you I say, be arising. And immediately the little girl stood up and went to walking about, for she was twelve years old. And they were amazed with a great amazement, and he charged them sternly that no one should know this, and he gave orders that she be given something to eat. And he went out from there and comes into his own country, and his disciples follow with him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to be teaching in the synagogue, and the many hearing were completely flabbergasted, saying, From where does this one get these things? And what wisdom is this which has been given to this fellow? Even such great exhibitions of supernatural power take place through the medium of his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Jude, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they saw in him that of which they disapproved, and which kept them from acknowledging him. And Jesus was saying to them, A prophet is not without a correct evaluation, and the due respect and deference which that evaluation demands except in his own country, 